Thank you for coming. My name is Neil Manichi. I'm Global Product Manager for Precision Fastening with AST, Division of Jurgens out of Cleveland, Ohio. We appreciate uh, you taking time to come and visit our uh, innovation brief. The topic today will be controlled fastening. Before we get into uh, the actual presentation and the objectives of the presentation, I'll go over some questions that I'd like you to consider while we're going through the, the presentation. Have you ever had a loose or missing fastener? If you could improve the quality of, of your joint, thereby delivering a more consistent, more reliable part going out the door, would that be of interest to you? And then, how are you currently fastening the product together, manually or, or with a power tool? Are your base materials plastic, metal, or something else? Is there a rubber gasket, lock wash, dry lock tight patch, or liquid lock tight involved in your assembly process? And then are you cutting or forming threads? As we get through that, um, especially the lock tight patch or the liquid lock tight, as you may know, that, that consistency uh, implies friction. And friction is important as we're driving fasteners and running assemblies. The objectives will be torque versus clamp load, how the application affects the torque, and then how speed impacts torque. What is torque? Torque is the product of two measurements, force and distance. A fastener and joint stretches, components being fastened, compresses. So basically what do we have? We have a, a fastener actually stretching, and then the bolt head and the underhead of the nut compressing. Onto the, onto the application. Uh, using a torque value to tighten a bolt, screw or a bolt is necessary to ensure the quality of the product and to ensure the product is safe to use. A, a lot of customers, uh, what they do is they don't consider the safety factor involved. Uh, some of the fastening uh, applications that should be considered as engine mounts, motor mounts, also a uh, grab handle. Some people don't consider grab handles actually as safe assembly, but if you're installing that in a vehicle and you have somebody of age, 80 years old or so, and it's not installed properly and they actually pull themselves up out of the vehicle and then grab handles slips, then it can actually fall on the pavement and injure themselves. The force you apply as you turn the fastener over the required distance. Here's a little diagram showing what I just mentioned. Let's see if I can. Here torque is that rotational force around the threads the nut running down onto the application and then the, the bolt head coming up. So that'll create tension in the fastener. And then the clamping force is, the, is what the underhead of the bolt and the underhead of the nut compress on. Clamp load, uh, a lot of people, they always equate torque to clamp load. And why is that? Because you're not gonna take the time, are you, in your application to actually shoot the fastener or shoot the bolt or do a 100% quality check normally in your applications. After the product is assembled, the force holding the parts together is not torque, it's clamping force. That what we're, that's what, exactly what we're trying to achieve, isn't it? It's actually the clamp load. You want to maximize the clamp load. Proper torque is merely the way that an assembler reaches the correct fastener clamping force. So it's you, the engineer, that calls out the torque spec, or design engineer that calls out the torque spec, and then you're, you're given that torque spec, and then setting a screwdriver by hand or by uh, manual op operation. Limits of the joint are the crush point of the components, threads, and stretch point of the fastener. Interesting here, crush point of the components, it's actually uh, in a facility that the maintenance person was using an impact wrench. When they were running down the fastener, the crush point of the clamp let loose and then shot across his eyeglasses and injured his head a little bit. So sometimes tighter is not always better. And a lot of people, especially assemblers, there's a challenge with that. What are ways to maximize clamp load? Torque always goes somewhere. It is a question if it is going to go into the part in order to maximize clamp load or will it be dissipated elsewhere? So a couple ways of controlling your tightening process would be to fixture that part or fixture the tool. The, here, if I do it the right way, is the torque arm, and that tool is mounted. So therefore, what's that do? That absorbs the torque reaction. Have you ever run down a fastener at your house and you're running down the drill and the, the drill 
kicks on you. That's torque reaction. So that's what we're trying to minimize here with, with an arm or even fixturing the part. If you have a part on your application and it moves or twists, that is taking up some of the torque that's being applied. Importance of torque and clamp load. If a fastener is not tightened, what happens? Warranty recalls, implant lot inspections, inspection at the customer's facility, screw bouncing around inside a part, and then liability. Basically, the warranty recalls and the implant lot inspection, what's that do? That costs you money. Because you're using resources either inside the plant or when you go to a customer's facility to spend an, in man hours, people hours, in order to uh, inspect parts. The inspection, I'm sorry, the screw bouncing around inside a part. A lot of times I'll ask the question, do you know or have you ever had somebody that, or know somebody that have a little rattle in their dashboard or in their door panel? A lot of times I get the answer is yes. That little screw bouncing around, that vibration has loosened that fastener and now you got the rattle, the rattle. Liability, again, going back to the grab handle or airbag install. Factors affecting the torque, temperature, vibration, and friction, and speed. To elaborate, uh, temperature, if you have injection molded parts, when that mold comes out of the die, it can be warm or it needs time to cool off. So the temperature of the actual part that you're running that fastener into will affect your clamp load. And then vibration, as I just mentioned, sometimes that fastener will work its way loose. Friction, most of the energy intended for clamping force is lost to friction. An increase in friction during assembly usually decreases clamping force and then lubricant. Pictured on the side, we have some nylon nuts here and then some lock patch here. That increases the fat friction, which usually decreases your torque or clamp load during the rundown. And then your speed can affect your torque, which we'll show, I'll show you here in a little bit. Here's a uh, picture, what, what happens here, this is a real bolt, it's actually stretched, and here's a blown up uh, diagram. The stretched area, basically you have what they call the elastic region uh, of, the, of the bolt. So we're running down, we're compressing the substrates, we're stretching that fastener, and it's gone past this elastic region into the yield, so then it's snapped or broke. Well, not in this picture, but it does break. Interesting, in a particular application I was involved in, an engineer came to me when I was in a plant one time. He said, Neil, he goes, look at this. He showed me two pieces. He showed me the bolt, which was permanently stretched, right in here. And then he showed me the nut, which had the other part already assembled. And I, I thought that was pretty cool, but he didn't find it too amusing because of the part actually uh, breaking. Here, applied torque and friction. 55% uh, nut and under underhead friction, and then 35% thread friction. So your applied torque, as you can see, most of it occurs during the rundown or as that head comes in contact with your, with your substrate. We'll talk a little bit about hard joints and, and soft joints. Why should you know the different joint types? Because different base materials do not react the same way to the same combination of fastener and fastener tool. Whether a joint is hard or soft depends on the amount of resistance the fastener experiences in the clamping of the, of the joint. Hard joints and soft joints, again, continue. This term snug and preload. Some engineers use the term snug, some use preload. What is that? When we're running a fastener down and the underhead comes in contact with your substrate, some engineers consider that snug, others preload. From that point that the underhead makes contact, with your substrate. When it turns 30 degrees or less, it is considered a hard joint. When it rotates 720 degrees or more, it is a soft joint. What is degrees? Degrees is the number of revolution, 360 degrees or one revolution. Okay. Anything in between that, some engineers consider either medium, medium soft, medium hard. Same tool on both hard and soft joints will yield uh, different torque results. And we'll also see a little diagram in a few minutes. Soft joint. Uh, here is our actual controlled fastening system, which displays the torque in a number of degrees. This is a little graph. As you can see, it's a soft joint, torque versus angle. 
And what we're doing as we're fastening, remember how I mentioned about the spinning or turning of the fastener? How during the rundown, that's where most of not most of your torque, that's where torque is applied. So it ramps up, ramps up, and then it peaks, and then it hits the target torque. In a hard joint, however, it free runs, and then it spikes real quick. So there's a difference there in, in the soft joint versus the hard joint. Speed, how does speed affect torque? Fast versus low RPM. Here in our controller, we're able to program the target torque, the high limit, the low limit. So that's your process window that you're trying to achieve. Threshold torque, run down speed, 400 RPM. What I did with the angle though, I kept those uh, windows open. And then here, your target torque, this is your low RPM, high limit 5.5, 4.5, 1.5, and rundown speed is 150. The difference here, of course, is what? The rundown speed here and here. The results on the same joint is this. We had a failure on the hard joint, acceptable angle limits. On a soft joint, we had acceptable torque, and then it's definitely soft and the angle is good as well. So you can see how speed can affect your output. The low RPM here, five inch pounds, and then five inch pounds here, both with 150 RPM. Both are good on a hard and soft joint. As you also know, the fastener didn't run down as far, did it? Because you have less angle or less rotation. Just to review the objectives, torque versus clamp load, how the application affects torque, how speed impacts torque. And then we'll always ask what's riding on your assembly. What do you assemble that could cause a challenge in your assembly and have an effect to an end user? That is it. For questions, please come to our booth or we do have a couple minutes if you want to go ahead and ask me any questions. You're more than welcome to do that. Thanks. Enjoy the time at the show.